Welcome pals! I'm going to cover how to set up a hosted server for the recently launched game Pal World. There are official servers, but playing on those means that you and your friends are at the mercy of someone else's rules. They might get wiped, you can't prevent cheaters, and if someone wants to grief you, well, you're playing out of luck. You can set up your own server with friends and gaming community, and that's often an affordable option that at least I prefer. This video will be about how to set up a rented hosted server, not a dedicated local server. If you are interested in that, don't worry, I will leave a link in the description below. I put out a video about that yesterday, which is fairly simple. It just means you have to run it 24-7 yourself on your own PC and a lot of people don't like to do that. I will leave a link in the description, it is an affiliate link which has a 10% monthly discount code that you can use to save yourself some money. for. Transparency here, this is not a sponsored video and I do partner with Pink Perfect and I've used them for many years for many servers. I'm not being paid or sponsored by Pink Perfect to make this video. They do have a very competitive offering which is why I've been using them for all my server needs. First of all, click the link and head over to the site. We're going to hit order now. There will be a bunch of game server options and if you can't find PAL World on the front, you at least just search for it under the game servers. When you get to here, you'll see some information about what they provide and you can order in pound, USD or Euro. But let's go through just very quickly about what it offers to have a hosted one. You do get access to things like mod managers, configuration file editors, FTP access. You can switch games, you can switch worlds, and you have the game panel, which is actually really nice and you can use that even on your mobile as well. There are a bunch of test testimonials, there's other information here. They mention, for instance, instant setup. It takes a few minutes. 24-7 support, which is really good. Backup, uh, hardware is really good. Global locations is one of the reasons I like to use it because they are pretty much everywhere. Game switching, if you want to go to a different game, you can do that as well. DDoS protection and actually comes with free web hosting. We're going to go to USD. On the right side, we're going to see the order summary. Don't worry about the $21 now, but that's going to change as we go through because they do pre-select some options that we are probably going to deselect. So coming down here, they mentioned that if you go by quarterly, semi-annual, annually, you get a nice discount. What this means is that let's say you do quarterly, you immediately get 5% off. And normally that's definitely worthwhile because people don't keep servers for just a month. So let's switch it over to quarterly here. We're going to change location to let's say US, uh, New York. We're going to change the service so it's only running an SSD. You don't normally ha need to have it on NVMe. It is slightly faster, but you might not notice anything. Normal support, normally good. 7 GB is the RAM by default. CPU priority, we're going to bring it down to normal priority, which is normally good enough, at least to start with. Then you have the host name, so we're going to do vet test. You do need to put in an Archon password. We're going to do vet test Archon. This one is used if you are connecting through an Archon client. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. Just put in a password and write it down somewhere so you don't lose it. And here we see the price. This is not the final price, but it is per quarter. If we switch over to monthly, you'll see it goes down to less than $15. But let's uh, keep it at quarterly for now and hit continue. We have the review and checkout page. And do keep an eye on what you have here. Look through because you can change a lot of these things later on. If you select the location you want to change it, you can erase a ticket and have them move it. But that might take a day or two. So getting it right the first time is, of course, a lot better. Just makes it easier. Then we're going to go down to promotion codes. You want to type in Vidui and we're going to check what happens to the price. Bam! We have a 10% recurrent discount, which means we're saving $4 every payment, which is nice. It's 10%. And we hit checkout. On the checkout page, you have to fill in your personal details so they know who you are. You're going to be their customer. You have to put in a password, confirm the password, and you have to decide how you're going to pay. PayPal, credit card, pay safe, skill brand, skill grill, bank transfer, or Bitcoin. I normally just use PayPal credit card because that's the easiest way. Tick in, I have read, agreed to terms of service. You might want to have a look at those ones and hit complete order. Once you've made the order, sit tight. Their backend will go and install the Parallel 
server and set everything up for you. So don't touch anything. You can go and check your email over the next few minutes. You'll see a few of them, such as mentioning about new billing information and that you have an invoice and order confirmation. And then a few minutes later, you will get the game panel details and your login credentials that are needed to log into the game panel. So go have a look at those in a few minutes. Uh, don't touch it until you receive these emails and it tells you that it's ready because it is installing. And if you start canceling and clicking around, you can actually interrupt that and then you have to raise a ticket and that's just gonna take a lot of extra time. So don't do that. Just wait until you have the emails. Once you get the emails, check the login, check the credentials and go and log in and it'll look something like this. The first thing we want to do is hit stop because the server is actually running. It starts automatically once they've installed everything, but we want to stop it because we want to make sure we are configuring it our way. We also want to go and hit update your server from Steam because even though they have installed the latest version, assuming you did that and then a few hours later you came and logged on the first time, there could have been an update and then you will have a discrepancy between your client and server. So I always go and hit update your server from Steam. If it's already updated, it will just validate. If there is a new update, it'll tell you that it's downloading and installing and patching. You can see in this case, they verified everything is fine. So we're going to go back to the actual server. Once we're here, you see there's a bunch of options here. You have the configuration files. We're going to go there in a moment. You have log viewer. You have the update that is important. If there is an update on the client, you do need to log in here again and update the server from Steam as well to make sure that it's also updated. You also are able to back up the save data and restore it, which is good. But let's go to configuration file. So click there and then click the text editor. That will bring up the configuration files that you have. Now, all of these ones do not necessarily work. I've heard that some of them simply don't work, but some of them will be pretty much straightforward. You know, they talk about the a daytime speed rate. If you increase that, I'll, presumably the time goes faster. So I would just leave a lot of them uh, as they are for the default because we're not entirely sure what changing them will actually make happen on your server. And the first time you're playing this, you probably want to make sure it's working rather than tweaking all the different settings as well. Some important ones though is for instance, server name. I'm going to leave it at vet test. We'd already put that in. There's a description you can change. It, there's a admin password. We put that in as well and a server password. Leave it blank for now and simply save and exit. You can change these ones, but don't change the password. The reason being is that there is an issue with the game right now, where if you're starting a server and you cannot find it through the in-game server browser and you have to use the direct connectivity, such as this one, it will not accept the password and you cannot log in if you have a password set. So that's a bit of a problem. They, they're going to be fixing that really soon and they know about it, but it's an issue right now. There are some workarounds to it and I put a video out a little bit earlier today about how you can work around that. So go check out that video as well if you're interested about having a password on your server. But for now, we're just gonna copy this one and we're gonna start the server and then we're gonna get back into the game. So we're here in the game, head over to join multiplayer game. And this is where hopefully on the community server, your server will actually show up. The problem is, and if I do a vet test here, you'll see there's nothing there. Let's go back. And the problem we have here is that there are literally thousands, tens of thousands of servers. And every time you are clicking here, display, you get an extra 200. You can imagine there are 20,000, 30,000, God knows how many servers out there. And it's going to be really difficult to always find your server. This is one of the main complaints about server browsers in that unless they have a really good search, this search, for instance, is only based on the servers that are right now in this list. And that's not what you want to have it have. You want the search to be on all the servers that are contacting their servers, not necessarily the ones that you have displayed because it's just a pain to do that, which is why you have this direct connect. So if we try VETC, it still doesn't show up. So what we want to do, we want to type in this IP and the port that we got from the previous page and do a direct connect. And through doing that, you can see we have now logged onto the server. We are on the server. We're just gonna do this and I'm gonna do start game. You're gonna accept everything, but we already are on the server right now because we didn't specify 
a password. If we had specified a password, you would have gotten an error, at least with the launch version of the server and client. They will be fixing that, so hopefully in a day or two, this is not a problem anymore. You can go back to setting a password. But leaving the password blank like this, you should be able to log in, and you see this intro stuff that we always get when we are creating our character, and we are in the game. And you see how easy it is to get up a hosted server with Pink Perfect so you can start playing with your games and you can select like any location that you want to have just like you would normally do when you're playing the game. It's simple, it's efficient, you don't have to worry about keeping your server running 24-7 because Pink Perfect is hosting it, they're handling all the maintenance. You are of course paying a few dollars a month per person if you're having a few friends, but that's really not a lot of money. And if you've come this far, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel so you can catch all the other videos that I'll be making of Palworld. If you're running into any issues at any point, make sure you are on your page and you hit get support and go search or raise a ticket for Pink Perfect support staff to be able to assist you. Enjoy your game. See you next time.